So in this video, I'm going to start looking at why factoring is useful. And one of the usefulness of factoring um, is that we are going to be able to solve a quadratic equation using factoring. And this will lead into the next unit also. So you have to say you can solve a quadratic equation by factoring and you can apply the zero product property. So look at these um, statements right here. What makes each statement true? So what times 16 is zero? Well, hopefully your head is thinking, well, zero times 16 is zero. Negative 69 times what is zero? Well, zero times negative 69 is zero. And then if they have a whole string of numbers, 17 times 89 times what? Negative 123 would make all this zero? Well, zero. This is called the zero product property. Any number times zero is zero, no matter how big or how small, Anything times zero is zero. You're having zero of something. This is going to be applied today um, when we're solving by factoring. So using the zero prior property, we are going to solve this. So notice we have two factors. So what this means is you have x plus 3 times x plus 2. So if either one of these is zero, it would make my answer zero. So we need to know what's going to make each one zero. Well, a way you can think about it is I need x plus 3 to equal zero, or I need x plus 2 equal zero. So I can either solve these individually, or most of you will be able to do this in your head, which is what I'm going to expect. So if this is negative, if x is negative 3, that makes this zero, which makes this product zero, or if x is negative 2, it makes this zero or the product zero. So I actually have two answers. X minus three or X minus two would make this zero. So looking at B, what's gonna make each one of these zero? So again, if this is zero, it makes it zero, or if this is zero, it makes it zero. So we're gonna have two answers. So I go X minus seven equals zero, add seven. So seven, would make this zero and then make the answer it would not make this term or this factor zero but makes this one zero and then 2x minus 7 add 7 so you have 2x equals 7 divide by 2 x equals you have 7 halves 3 and a half or 3.5 it doesn't matter so that's my other answer, because that would make this factor zero. If this was zero, it makes it zero. If this was zero, it makes it zero. So I have two answers. So looking at C and D, same thing. I want to know what's going to make either factor zero, because then that will make this statement true. So 3y minus 5 equals zero. So I add 5. 3y equals 5. Divide by 3, y is 5 thirds, or two point or 1.6 repeating. And then this one you could probably start doing in your head because you want to go y minus 2 equals 0. What's going to make this 0? Well, that's going to be 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So that one is simple enough to solve in your head where this one. You, some of you guys can probably start doing this in your head, but kind of seeing what you need to do here. So on D, um, a lot of students get stuck on this one, but still we have what two things are getting multiplied together. Well, 8x is one factor, and 3x minus 2 is another factor, even though it's not written out like parentheses. The parentheses are still there. So you're really looking at what's going to make 8x equal 0, because if this is 0, 0 times this will make 0, no matter what this is. Well, you can divide by 8, so x is... Zero. Zero is actually one of your answers. And then I have 3x minus 2. I want to know what's going to make that zero. So I add 2. So I get 3x equals 2. Divide by 3. x equals 2 thirds as my other answer. If I plug 2 thirds into here, that would make that zero. If I plug a zero into here, that would make that zero. So both answers are my solutions. All right, so now we're going to solve by factoring. Notice I want solve. Before up to this point, I just said factor. And that was kind of leading you up to this point so you would know how to do 
this step. The big difference here is you're going to see an equal sign. And it needs to equal 0 if you want to solve, because then we can apply the zero product property. So b squared minus 7b minus 18 is 0. So follow your steps of factoring. GCF. Is there a GCF between b, negative 7b, negative 18? No. So then I'm just going to factor um, using your box, or you can just use your parentheses. I'm just going to go right to the parentheses on this point. So we have b times b to get our b squared. Factors of negative 18 that add up to negative 7, that's negative 9 and 2. So I have negative 9 and plus 2. Now, this is where we are from the previous slide. We have our two factors. Once we have our factors, then we know, can figure out what two things do we need to make each factor zero. So B, you need to figure out what's going to make this zero or what's going to make this zero. Well, B minus what is, B minus 9 is, what would make it zero would be 9. And then B plus 2, what's going to make that zero is negative 2. So my two answers are 9 and negative 2. So notice you're solved by factoring. So you factor, so you find the GCF, and then you solve. So on F, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Find the GCF. There is no GCF, so I'm going to go right to my parentheses. x squared is x and x. Again, you can do your box. You'll get the same answer. Go along and do your box in your notes if you want to. Well, factors of 6 that add up to 5 is 3 and 2. All right, you're not done here. You just factored, but we're solving. So I need to know what's going to make each factor equal to 0. Well, negative 3 is going to make this one equal to 0. And negative 2 is going to make that factor equal to 0. So looking at G, um, I first need to see... I'm going to solve by factoring, so GCF. I first have it equal to 0. The rest to do it, which you'll notice on H it does not, so we'll work on that H when we get there. You need to find the GCF 3. Um, all these are divisible by 3, so I can pull out that 3. And I have x squared. 54x divided by 3 is 18x. 243 divided by 3 is 81 equals 0. Again, just like that annoying little brother or sister, just trail along that 3. You can factor out. So factors of 81 that add up to 18, that's 9 and 9. Notice we have x plus 9 twice, so that completely factors into x plus 9 squared equals zero. All right, so I actually have two factors here. However, this is just three. There's nothing to plug in. There's no variable. So three, we can't do anything with. So here, I just have the x plus nine. I only have one x to find an answer for. On the previous ones, we've had two x's, so we have had two answers. We had two x's up here, but it actually came to be one. So what's going to make this zero? Negative nine. So x equals negative nine. So in this case, there's only one solution. So in H, notice we need it to equal 0. So it doesn't, so I need to shift everything over. And I want to shift it so this is positive. It makes factoring a lot easier. So x squared plus 7x minus 8 equals 0. I'm going to factor. There's no GCF. They're all relatively prime. Factors of negative 8 that add up to 7, that's positive 8, negative 1. It's going to make each one 0 is negative 8 and 1. Alright, so the last two. Um, so again, I need to equal 0. That's checked, that's done. I need to find my GCF if there is one. I see at least I can pull out an x squared. Looks like all of these are divisible by 3. So I get 9x squared plus 12x plus 4 equals 0. 
All right, so I have 3x squared. It's going to trail along. And this one, you might need your box, but if you're paying attention from previous videos, I have perfect square in front, perfect square in back. So I can just take the square root of each one. So I get 3x and 3x gives me 9x. 2 and 2. So that'll give me 6 and 6, which gives me 12 equals 0. I have two factors the same, which is our special case. 3x plus 2 squared equals 0. All right, so I need to figure out what makes each one 0. Now this one, before we just had a single 3, but now I have an x squared. So I can actually solve this. What's going to make this 0? I can divide by 3. You need to go through the steps. Go 0, square root. Remember we learned the last chapter, square root cancels out a square. Well, x equals square root of 0 is 0. So one answer is 0. Then I can set 3x plus 2 equals 0. Minus 2, get 3x equals negative 2. Divide by 3, x equals negative 2 thirds. It's a negative. I have two answers. All right, so on J does not equal zero. I find whoever is my highest power. Is this that's positive? So I'm going to add that over. Four x to the eighth. So I have x to the tenth. Plus five x to the ninth. Plus four x to the eighth. Equals zero. All right, so find my GCF. Well, they all have eight X's, so I'm gonna take it out of there. So I get X squared plus X plus four. So, oh, five X, I missed. Say that wasn't gonna factor. All right, so I have X to the eighth, it just trails along. I have X squared, so I know it's gonna be X and X. Factors of 4 that add up to 5 is 5 and 1. All right, so now in this case, I have three factors. 1, 2, 3. And each one has an x, so each one has an answer. So x to the 8th equals 0. Well, what to the 8th power is 0? x equals 0. That's one answer. Then I look at this one. What plus 4 is 0? Well, that's negative 4. What well, plus 1 is 0? That is negative one. And you are finished. All right, so review, you have the zero product property, which means anything times zero is zero, no matter what it is. Anything times zero is zero. So we apply that by making um, each factor zero. Set each factor equal to zero if there is a variable. We had that one case where it was just a single three that would not be one. They need a variable to actually get an answer. And then again, you're solving for x. Your previous, it will say factoring. A lot of students get messed up on this one. We're solving. And solving, the way you're going to have to solve is you're going to have to factor. We need to set each factor equal to zero. So we don't have that case. Um, one little problem I want to add that's probably going to mess you up on your work, so I want to discuss about it now. If you have something like this, let's say minus seven. All right. So if you have a problem like this, and I'm not going to do the whole problem, look to see who is your highest power, which is your leading term, which is the x squared. We always want it to be positive. A lot of students will be tempted to move the 8x over by subtracting it, but actually take the time. You want it to be positive, so take the time and move it over this way. So you get x squared plus 8x plus 7. Move the other two equal 0. Or you can move it over, but then you're going to have to factor out a negative 1. And then you would factor this and get your answers to make it equal to 0. Just a reminder to do a reflection to get credit for watching this video.